nestled in Battleground, Indiana, Wolf Park is a wildlife education facility catering to one of the world's most famous predators. A wolf Park started out as a research station for Dr. Eric Klinghammer back in 1972. This was also his home, but from the beginning he wanted to do more than simply collect data and publish papers. So he opened the park to visitors, he did community outreach programs for a while, and he tried to talk to people about the importance of wilderness and the importance of wolves. Wolf Park is a nonprofit. We also fall under the category of a zoological institution, although we don't particularly identify as a zoo. We like to call ourselves a wildlife education facility. So Wolf Park is a very unique place, and a lot of people in Indiana may not even know it exists. In the 70s, we started with Coco and Cassie, two wolves originating from Brookfield Zoo, and our founder, Dr. Klinghammer, with a mission of conservation, education, and behavioral research. Wolf Park, within our mission, is aiming for an overall vision of saving wolves and saving wilderness. And one of the best ways we do this is through our programs that we offer to the public. Our goal is to help Hoosiers connect with the species that are in their backyards. So that would be things like foxes, gray foxes specifically, which we have two individuals here of that species, helping them understand the roles that animals like coyotes and possums and raccoons play in their local ecosystems. Indiana has an endangered bat species, the Indiana bat right now. So we do a lot of talking about different ways that Hoosiers can actually connect to the wildlife that is directly around them. So Wolf Park has wolves, obviously, but we use wolves as a greater appeal to get people to want to come in. But a lot of our conservation work in terms of local communities is focused on species that they can find in their own backyards. So by our mission, we're focused on conservation, education, and behavioral research. But we are a very unique nonprofit in the fact that we socialize our wolves so that our style of research allows us to really understand the animal while providing them the best care possible in their lives here. And so the socialization process we do allows us to interact with them safely and provide them as stress-free an environment as possible. We have a lot of fun with our wolves trying to make sure that they have the best life in captivity that we can give them and we're always trying to come up with ways to give them a better life or make sure that we're not slipping down from our current high point. Right now we're very interested in how we can give animals true choices in their lives. So we try to give the animals choices between things that they will like so that they have a, a real set of options that mean something to them. The park works hard each and every day to ensure all the animals receive the kind of care they need. <laughs> so there's no such thing as a regular day here at Wolf Park. Every day is different. That's one of the great things about working in this kind of environment. So any given day, I come in, I check in our animal care building on property and see kind of what has been accomplished that day. I'm going to come in, I'm going to check in with the interns, I'm going to check in with the volunteers, and then I'm going to go get hands and eyes on the animals that I directly work with. So in my case, that would be our bison herd of 13. I might do some food preparation for them, walk down to one of their pastures, do a safety check, see kind of, you know, how things are going for them. And I might do a through the fence training session, or I might get a group of volunteers to come out and do a more extensive husbandry uh, activity with me. We might shift them from field to field, really anything that their daily needs are, you know, are going to require or what the environment's going to require. So if it's weather, shifting the animals, making sure that their waters are changed multiple times a day, making sure that their enclosures are secure. In the summertime, we do a lot of medical husbandry, so making sure that the flies are staying off of them, cleaning up their enclosures, right? A lot of, lots of basic care, but we also do a lot of collaborative training with our animals as well, which we might do any given, any day. We may also work on training husbandry behaviors, or sometimes we do things just for fun, and we try to pick out things that are fun for both the animals and the humans. For example, we've come up with a number of games we can play. We don't encourage the wolves to play with us by wrestling but we can engage them in object play or training can be used to entertain them as well. Once they've learned new behaviors, we can mix the behaviors up, have them run through a variety of behaviors in various orders so that they don't fall into a set routine, and then they can earn part of their allowance of training treats that way. A lot of our enrichment is designed to elicit behavior that they would use in the wild to help them survive. 
but sometimes we do things that are just for fun. Well, we utilize positive reinforcement respondent conditioning for all of our animals here at Wolf Park and taking that farther, we want our animals to be able to participate in their own husbandry. By way of having animals in captivity, we as their caretakers have an ethical obligation to give them the best quality of life that we possibly can. So a lot of that involves the mental stimulation through positive reinforcement training, but also giving them the opportunity to opt in to particular practices that we may engage them in, like vaccinations or, or blood draws. In addition to caring for their animals, the facility has a mission of saving wolves and saving wilderness. Wolf Park does its best to help wolves in the wild in a couple of ways. We give seminars on teaching people about wolves and some of our seminars are specifically geared towards wolf ecology and how they help the ecosystem in the wild. We bring this into our lectures at Howl Night and other public presentations quite often. We also do that on our Follow the Pack tours and some of our specialty tours where we talk about the wolves' ecological role in ecosystems. Wolves not only keep prey species healthy, but they may play a role in protecting us humans who like to hunt and eat those species too from diseases that we humans might catch, but that wolves have a good natural immunity to. Wolves are a keystone species, and a very iconic one at that. The best example is the trophic cascade that they caused when they were reintroduced to Yellowstone. But what is a keystone species? Well, you think of the original use of that term. When you have an arch, you have a keystone in the center. And if you were to remove that keystone, the arch would crumble. And so we see the impact that wolves can have on all levels of the ecosystem ecosystem, ranging from plant life and soil erosion to herbivore population control and the health of various herbivores and other prey species that the wolves may interact with. Wolf Park helps wolves in the wild primarily through our education mission base. So we are working on expanding our direct conservation impact right now. Our niche, again, is in education. Additionally, we really value the human-non-human -human relationship. So we want people to be able to come to Wolf Park and see a wolf up close and personal and develop a relationship with that animal because we do believe that you're more inclined to take care of something that you have invested in. Just telling people, hey, care about wolves. You know, people have to have a why to do that. So they can come out to Wolf Park, they can learn about the impact that these animals have in the environment, and they can also be impacted by that animal through a unique in-person experience. And then they're going to then go out and want to change the way that they interact with the wildlife around them. And that directly impacts conservation, even at a grassroots level. While the park's gray wolves enjoy care and protection, their wild counterparts have been removed from the endangered species list, leaving them open to hunting and lethal predator management. Wolf Park is against the removal of the gray wolf from the Endangered Species Act, and we've been against it through several presidencies, so this is not specific to any sort of political party, but rather the science behind their conservation and their population dynamics, what we see happen when they are removed, and oftentimes those populations are decreased so much that they immediately get put back on the Endangered Species Act. Unfortunately, wolves are just recently removed from the endangered species list per the last political administration. They are in the process of being reestablished on the endangered species list, but there is actually a lot of political strife surrounding wolves in the lower 48 United States because endangered species status is left up to the states themselves. So some states are absolutely for wolf recovery and wolf reintroduction and other states believe that the wolf population in that state has recovered and then they open up the state to hunting permits for wolves. So it's actually quite political and very, very complex. I've heard other people say this too, that they think without wolf howls and wolves in the wilderness, there's something going out of it. The wilderness is a little emptier. When we're talking about conservation, we're talking about education, particularly we're talking about wild animals or very polarizing and popular wild animals like wolves. It's really important to understand that we live in something called the Anthropocene, which means there's not a centimeter of this planet that hasn't been impacted by the presence of people. So when we talk about wild animals and we talk about wild space and the conflict that ensues from wild animals and people, they are just trying to cut a living 
in a world that is rapidly outpacing them. Whether you come to a wildlife facility like Wolf Park, or you visit a zoo, or you visit a national park, you know, where, where there are wild animals, you know, you are contributing to conservation efforts by coming out and hearing a program or a keeper chat, or visiting, you know, Yellowstone National Park, going on a wolf watching excursion. You know, you are contributing to conservation efforts. So conservation doesn't have to be this big, huge, kind of distant idea. It can be something that that you can do at home. You know, conservation is recycling. Conservation is planting native wildflowers instead of lawns, right? That's all conservation. So you can have an impact even if you don't have the ability to work for World Wildlife Fund or Defenders of Wildlife or have a lot of dollars to donate to large-scale facilities. Like by coming out and being present and listening to these keeper chats and, and engaging with the animals that they have, you're making a direct conservation impact and helping animals in the wild.